We have about uh, two minutes before we begin. And I thought this is a good idea for me to know uh, what has been your exposure to Patanjali Yoga Sutras? Anyone can share. A little bit, yes? Can you elaborate? Like you're familiar with the sutras, you probably might have studied them. Okay. And, and do you have any questions from whatever you've studied about the sutras? Okay, so relatively new, right? Would, would that be safe for me to assume? Okay. And any general existential question in life anyone has? <laughs> because <laughs> have I opened a can of worms? <laughs> because then I will weave it into the sutras, that's why. Any, any questions you want me to touch upon? <clears throat> yes. Right. So I'll cover that. Okay. Okay. And uh, is there clarity on the purpose of life? Yeah, how many would say, I, I know it's a very, very deeply personal question, <laughs> but I will still ask, uh, how many of us have, uh, are clear about why I'm doing what I'm doing, where I'm headed, and so on and so forth? H how many? Okay. There, there's some little hesitation. It's like halfway there, huh? Okay, great. Right. Those two would be connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Process. Okay. Okay, great. We can begin, I think. It's 11.30. <clears throat> so I'm going to chant a few prayers, and I will request you to repeat after me. We seek the grace of uh, Rishi Patanjali. So Rishi is a word for sage and Patanjali was his name. He put together, codified the sutras. He wrote them down. He didn't invent yoga. All that was there in the surrounding, all the practices, he just put it all together. And so whenever we study any text, we seek the grace of the teacher that made it available to us. Right? So you can repeat after me. Om Yogena Chittasya Padena Vacham Malam Sharirasya Javaidyakena Yopa Karotam Pravaram Muninam Patanjalim Pranajali Rana tos me Pranajali Rana tos me Om Sada Shiva Samaram Bham Shankaracharya Madhyamam Asmadacharya Paryantam Vande 
गुरु परम परम ओ so we have two sessions today on patanjali yoga sutras and uh, we have to little bit understand uh, the underlying philosophy that is the basis for some of the yoga that we do so patanjali was a sage a rishi and the prayer that we chanted was recognizing that he offered us medicine for health he was a vaidya in that sense vaidya as in a physician like a medical person he helped us with even uh, vacham or speech uh, grammar so it is also recognized that rishi patanjali wrote a commentary on one aspect of vyakaranam grammar and the impurities that are there in our mind malam he helped us purify how by giving us these different sutras so what is a sutra sutra literally means a thread and a sutra is a very short sentence you must remember that a lot of traditions related to the veda or what we refer to as a vedic tradition is an oral tradition and therefore the sutras have to be very tight very precise and very short because they have to be remembered and they are chanted in a particular way so you move around with this hard drive <laughs> this gift that has been given because all the sutras are memorized they are available to you and then you understand it bit by bit Patanjali Yoga Sutras has 196 sutras and the way the text is structured it is divided into four padas pada meaning a quarter we will only be able to touch upon some of the sutras mostly the first pada which is referred to as the samadhi pada and then the sadhana pada okay the second one the third and the fourth we may not get into uh, the third one is uh, called vibhuti pada which talks a lot about siddhis powers okay uh, super human powers and uh, uh, vibhuti uh, uh, kaivalya pada is about moksha okay freedom and so on freedom from all limitation so now the any text in the vedic tradition always begins with the goal and the first sutra is and you can repeat after me atha yoga anushasanam atha yoga anushasanam test three words atha yoga anushasanam so atha here after after a lot of practices because even even to get into yoga you need some preparation so after some practices after the um, you know to some extent this ashtanga which we will look at here is the teaching of yoga anushasanam uh, literally is translated as discipline but it can also 
uh, be looked upon as a teaching that follows uh, the practice and practice that follows the teaching. Okay? And here comes the definition of yoga. Yoga chitta nivritti nirodha. Yoga chitta nivritti nirodha. Again, yoga chitta nivritti nirodha. So these are things you will take away. Sutra. That's it. And then because you've understood what it means, you can bring it into your life again and again. It's a very deep sutra. And in fact, the whole <laughs> Yoga Sutras is actually explaining and telling us how we can get to living the meaning of the first, I mean the second sutra, the first sutra, the teaching. What what is yoga? What is the definition of yoga? Anybody who has no exposure to yoga sutras, can you make a guess? What do you think? How do you define yoga? Yes? Thinking of the mind and the body? Uh, linking, the linking the body and mind. Uh, what for? <laughs> Oneness. Okay. Good. Yes? to know yourself very good so here we are talking about chitta nivrittihi so chittam again has to be uh, unpacked but let's for now consider it as the mind okay and when we look at the mind in the vedic tradition it has many aspects so there is the um you know, the vacillating aspect of our mind in terms of desires, feelings, emotions, because it's not, it's, it comes and goes, right? And then there is the uh, nishchayatmika buddhihi, you know, like a definite decision. There are three or four or maybe more food stalls, which shall we eat? <laughs> there are some of us who just sit, I mean, stand there, gaze, look around, who's eating what? We take some time to get to a decision. And then there are some of us who will be like straight, I'm going straight for vegan food and I make a dash. Okay? So this, is, this happens all the time for us. We're making like so many decisions every day, so many choices. And this vacillation goes on and on. And then of course there is chittam, which is memory. Memory, you know, ideally is just a record of events. But for us, our memory is not like that because there are a lot of stories that get attached to the various images and the movies that have unfolded on the canvas of our life. So, so there's lots of stuff happening. And then, of course, is the ahankara, the one that holds it all together. So this is how we look at mind. Mind is not just like a catch-all term. But it has its many, many functions. Mind you, it doesn't have four parts. Okay, Some people will say it has this part and that part. <laughs> because the, the beauty about the mind is it moves. So vritti pravaha, it flows. There is a constant flow of thoughts. And that is the beauty of the mind. Okay, so now what? Chitta vritti nirodhaha. Nirodhaha. Nirodaha can be translated as stopping. It can also be translated as mastery. So this chitta vrittihi, chitta vrittihi, the flow of thoughts that goes on and on, there is nirodaha of that, there is mastery. So the translation is yoga is mastery of the mind. Suppose you translate it as yoga is stopping all thoughts. Okay, we have this romantic idea that if all my thoughts are stopped, I have an empty mind, then all will be well with me. Yes, some people have yeah, entertained this thought that I should have an empty mind. Well, if you have an empty mind, you can't drive. Okay, 
we don't want you to have an accident the mind is not our problem yoga is helping us not to have a quiet mind not to have an empty mind yoga helps us to transform our relationship with the mind understand this well okay i talk about a framework which is about our relationship with the mind and i divide this into four stages stage 1 is my mind is a problem i don't know what to do with it it's racing all the time i can't focus i'm always distracted my mind is a problem and i resist the way my mind is i always want to fix it how many of us feel like we are kind of there yeah okay <laughs> second stage if i stay with it and you know there are cert- certain practices um and of course the process of living life my mind and me are friends i look upon it as a gift i can use my mind for whatever is required okay so me and my mind are friends i don't see my mind as a problem how many of us feel like that yeah i find that the hands that rise are a little reluctant it's not like this it's like like i'm not quite sure where it is see this is also one of the issues about the mind there is doubt samshaya we will come it's one of the obstacles okay always doubting in the in the name of clarity we doubt so much it becomes a pattern then we will apply that pattern to all areas of life and then of course there is no certainty and so on anyway we come to that so if i stay with this if me and my mind are friends then what happens then for me the mind is an instrument so it's very beautiful how we look upon the word in sanskrit it is called antakarana literal translation is inner instrument okay instrument of course it cannot function by itself so there has to be someone who wields the instrument antakarana inner instrument so that's third stage that i am able to use my mind for whatever are my pursuits so now the question will be but do i have clarity on my pursuits <laughs> what am i making a commitment to right because even the cyber criminal can have great clarity about what the goal is and can strive for that right so the mind becomes an able instrument and ally <laughs> for the pursuit then what for as one of you said the uh, uniting or oneness that we seek the fourth stage is really that i consciousness to be discovered i atma illumine the mind that the conditions of the mind do not define me that i am more than the mind we have to be able to see this through a process of systematic teaching what we refer to in vedanta so this is the journey we want to be able to travel in transforming my relationship with my mind right so coming back to yoga chitta vritti nirodhaha i want a mastered mind so chitta vritti nirodaha nirodaha mastery of chitta vritti of the flow of thoughts so now when we are talking about mastery what kind of thoughts do we want and what kind of thoughts do we not want we have to know right so here is where uh, uh, the commentary suggests that thoughts that are inclined towards sattva have you all heard that term yeah how many uh, don't know what sattva is okay there are quite a few so sattva is really like uh, there is no uh, object called sattva floating around 
uh, of course all organic food uh, market marketing people <laughs> will label whatever they sell as sattva sattvic rice sattvic everything uh, of course it sells but sattva is a quality it's a guna I, i hesitate to translate guna as quality it has other connotations let's understand sattva as sattva only so sattva stands for lightness purity clarity knowledge and so on and so the fact that you all are here suggests to me that you want to know you want greater clarity and right now sattva is predominant because sattva is what helps us to learn something new and even the striving for clarity rajas is a lot of activity so you know how for some of us if we sit like uh, we're moving <laughs> not because we are chanting or you know some fidgeting something is happening so this like build up of energy there and um, somebody who's always running around because a lot of things need to be done all the time so rajas activity very good hmm? and then ta- tamas which is little uh, inertia sleep laziness uh, confusion and so on now all of us have these three types of thoughts in fact sattva rajas tamas is in the environment right now okay so i may be sattvic okay like i have predominance of sattva but right now there is rajas why the sun is uh, up in the sky <laughs> like it's approaching noon time and so there is a push towards activity we see this even during the day and that's the beauty that maya maya shakti you know the shakti that's responsible for this manifestation has all these three aspects sattva rajas tamas so on a daily basis we experience it for those who wake up earlier in the morning okay 4 5 6 something like that maybe su- summer time of course the sun makes you wake up <laughs> but other times is i know it's difficult anything you learn anything you read or if you have your other sadhana in terms of chanting your kriya or even for that matter your asana pranayama it will be very effective that time why because there is sattva in the environment because uh, there is a lightness and uh, slowly the energy is going to rise then of course uh, with with sunrise there is lot of rajas so you will see that uh, after uh, whatever certain duration of sleep you feel the drive to get up and even if you've slept less the previous night but if you wake up Uh, you know around sunrise or a little after sunrise you will still feel you have a lot of energy and then the move towards activity getting things done you know going to work or working from home or whatever it is running around all that is great rajas very very important for all of us and then uh, you know so rajas is at its peak throughout the day then slowly slowly that that quality that guna comes down then hopefully if we are not uh, checking out instagram late in the night <laughs> and not uh, totally absorbed in it then uh, tamas has to we glide into tamas tamas is very good okay a lot of people say oh tamas is bad no 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 tamas is very good why because uh it is Uh, signaling that you have had a good day your body has been you know body mind have been engaged now it's time to rest recover and it's good if you feel sleepy we better feel sleepy at the end of a long day <laughs> otherwise there is some balance that needs to be reached so in any case sattva rajas tamas these kind of thoughts are all the time there while we are sitting here there are some of us who are you know sitting there are some of us who are lying down yeah 
and then there are some of us who prefer sitting straight. This is all Sattva Rajas Tamas <laughs> that is operating right now. <laughs> okay. So we want our vrittis to be more sattva based, which is more dharma based. Dharma we will come to, you know, yama niyama later. What are the values you embody in life? Okay. So we'll come to that. Now, yoga, chitta, vritti, nirodhaha. What for mastery of mind? Next sutra. Tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam. Tada drashtuhu. Tada drashtuhu. Repeat. Tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam. Swarupe avasthanam. The mastery of the mind is for this purpose. In this, in that way, Tada Drashtuhu, the one who is the seer of what? Of this mastery of the mind. What should the person do? Swarupe, in one's own nature, the person abides. The person has no uh, aspiration to become better, brighter, more effective and so on and so forth for the sake of oneness. Yeah? What prevents us from seeing that all that is here is one is a sense of separation. I you, me, etc. I and my mind, I and my thoughts, I and my partner who don't seem to get along <laughs> and uh, we seem to punish ourselves often because we are hurt, etc, etc. So this duality that we experience or the separation that we experience, the inquiry is, is it real? And as a result of the practice or as a result of this mastery of the mind, we see that when we are exposed to the Shastra, when we listen to the teachings by the Guru, we are able to see what the Guru is saying about us. That what the Guru is saying, and here I am bringing in a bit of Vedanta, that all that is here is you, consciousness. And this body-mind that you experience and that you use is really just a form. So this truth is to be appreciated. But what we find as our experience is that I am distracted or I am thinking of you know, I hope the tree doesn't fall on my car where it has been parked. You know, those two dead trees <laughs> that Ram spoke about last night. Or I hear something and it triggers a memory. Right? So the mind is not where I want it to be. Or I'm thinking of what mantra shall I chant? What for? You know, any method, any technique is the next new shiny object. And we all know how enamored we can get. And that's the novelty for learning. But the steadiness that is required, the stability that is required to stay with something. Okay, what we refer to as persistence or discipline or perseverance. That will only come if you are committed to something. But if the commitment is not articulated, then why will you have any discipline? It's not necessary, right? So this mastery of the mind is not a one-time event. It's the whole life is dedicated to this self-mastery so that 
there may be self discovery self discovery that i am the fullness that i seek the atma i don't quite know what this atma word is we have to still understand but when it is said that ah atma is limitless i think maybe it's true you know i might just well entertain it as a possibility actually is the reality you are already liberated you are already free but sounds nice you know <laughs> but it's true it's it's true that's why it sounds nice it's not the other way around okay <laughs> i like it if he is nice ah therefore it is true no 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 it's true that's who you are you you have always been free from all disturbances but when i say you i do not mean you the personality i mean you the one who is aware of all the thoughts and the perceptions and the memories and the events and so on and so forth so now let's try to uh just close our eyes i am not going to do a guided meditation okay um uh, <clears throat> i would prefer it if you sit but if you are not going to sleep <laughs> then it's okay and i won't speak for a few minutes i want you to just uh, let your mind go wherever okay wherever it has to go and you just watch okay now now just before you close your eyes let me give you two three instructions <clears throat> try to not judge i shouldn't be thinking like this i should be thinking more of that no okay so this judging mind we will try to drop and then the evaluative mind the uh, mind that says oh you know i think i'm getting disturbed i shouldn't go there or this is this kind of a thought and you make some association oh i i have experienced this in the past no, no, no. we don't want to do that either okay so just like a, a you know a loving parent who has a child in the room the child is playing with some toys and is assured that because of the loving parent i can just play i can walk around wander etc so that we want you to be the loving parent who just go you just watches what's happening okay so let's try so you please ensure that your <clears throat> back is straight and your eyes are gently closed okay sit in a comfortable posture close your eyes gently and allow your mind to go wherever it needs to and your job is to just watch i will pause for a few minutes and then i'll give you instructions later
Ah. Yeah, yeah. So stimuli and an associated desire, right? Okay. Other thoughts? Splitting between backache and falling asleep. Right. Okay. Splitting between backache, falling asleep. I'm just repeating it so that it's clear. I mean, it's uh, uh, audible, huh? Okay. Yes? Right. So observing the, you know, sensations in the body and then what's happening in the mind sort of. Was this conscious or you were just... Right. So it's going like going along with the sensations and kind of yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other responses? Yes. Hungry. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's right. So the sensation in the body is such that you know one starts to experience it very strongly, and then uh, one may not want to <laughs> go anywhere else. Okay. Wonderful. So that's the next uh, sutra that part of the reason why we are not able to abide in our nature is because we are identified with whatever is the thought in the mind. Vritti sarupyam itratra Vritti sarupyam itratra Itaratra Itaratra. <laughs> okay. So, sarupyam, there is identification with the mind. Mind meaning the particular thought that is there. So, thou this, uh, I want to play the drums, I want to play the drums. Okay. Now, very strong desire, rising, rising, rising. Uh, if I play with it, you know, I say, yeah, I've been wanting to do this for so long and this is a sign I will go for it. Okay, it could be anything. Yeah, I'm just taking one thought. Wonderful, wonderful. And we need to be able to fulfill our desires such that the emotional growth that the fulfillment of a desire brings helps me, prepares me for my mastery. Have you all heard desire is the root cause of suffering? Yeah? Yeah, I think it's totally wrong. <laughs> okay, for us, desire uh, is a great glory. It is vibhuti. Because uh, we have ichha shakti, we have the power to desire. Everyone has it at all moments. Depending, uh, it doesn't even depend on your age and stage of life. Like... Uh, this uh, 80 year old person was talking to me and uh, he said, you know, I met a very interesting lady. But who will want to be with me at this age? I said, why not? So the desire is there, <laughs> but he's not sure. So desire is not age dependent. You could have any kind of desire. Now, what is it? that prevents me from abiding in my nature is the excessive identification with the mind. And the quality of the mind is such that there are different kinds of thoughts. Now, if I see a donkey, I am very clear, I am the subject, donkey is the object straight, clean. I am different from the donkey. Yeah. Even if I, you know, may, bray, may make brain sounds, but okay. So I, I'm the subject, donkey is the object. 
then i see a thought in my mind mark my words i see a thought in my mind i see something external to the mind i see something external to the mind subject object i see a thought in my mind is my mind internal to me or external to me external how many of you say my mind is internal to me okay and how many of you all say my mind is external to me yeah mind thoughts thoughts external fantastic external means it's other than you it is an object of your awareness this is very interesting external doesn't mean it's outside the body okay in the context of the yogic vedic tradition what is external means it is an object of your awareness it is not you you associated with it you identify with it you can be consumed by it you know which often happens but i can see that i am more than the thoughts that keep flowing which means that i am free from the thoughts i can pick and choose can we pick and choose <laughs> our thoughts because if we were able to do that there would be mastery but we find we struggle so this identification with the thought that happens uh so that we are so consumed by it that does not allow me to have mastery and therefore it does not allow me to abide in my own nature so then what shall we do we have to identify certain kleshas okay have you heard the word klesha yeah klesha is a word for affliction and before we get to the kleshas <laughs> there is a, a sutra that talks about how we have to go about the mastery this is 1.12 abhyasa vairagya abhyam tat nirodhah so the word nirodha you might remember from earlier so we are the the mastery can be achieved how by abhyasa by repetition by practice oh but practice is so monotonous how boring how boring how many times do we have to repeat an asana and pranayama like you know is there not a crash course in yoga 200 hours 300 hours 500 hours these are all considered crash courses for us okay in in traditional learning like only if you've had like 12 years of full time learning then we say ah okay maybe master maybe okay <laughs> because it's rigorous is intensive abhyasa repetition then all of us struggle with discipline yes because one angle of discipline is repetition we want novelty all the time what is new what is new trending news yeah <laughs> everything is trending netflix is a, oh oh uh, i just watch for 2 minutes what's trending in the uk oh everybody is watching it i have fomo fear of missing out so let me just see the trailer oh this is so gripping maybe i i i just watch one episode it's okay and then we all know the root you know how binge watching happens just one episode you know but uh, what to do you know this is very good for me i'll be more relaxed <laughs> so we we have our reasons right we will justify and it all started with attraction towards the new the latest shiny new object right the abhyasa is that 
I repeat again and again, not mechanically. And this has got to do with Yama Niyama, the practice of Dharma, and Asana Pranayama and so on. Basically, any Anga that we look at, okay, Ashta 8, Anga limbs, but it's not necessarily, it has a sequential aspect to it, but it is also simultaneous. And one of the things in life is we want to be able to hold paradoxes, seeming paradoxes. You say, but you said it was sequential. Now you're saying it's simultaneous. I'm saying it's both. So if I, let's say I'm doing an asana and I'm, I'm jumping a few steps here. So one of the niyamas is tapas. Tapas and, okay, tapas vadhyaya is there, but I go with tapas and santosha. Tapas means some, some exertion, some force. It's religious discipline, okay, because it is linked to Ishvara. Ishvara is a word for Bhagavan, God, okay. I avoid using the word God because of our old associations of someone sitting in Timbuktu and has got nothing to do with the creation and then who is uh, judgmental and etc, etc. So now when I am doing an asana, a lot of injuries happen because I don't know when to stop. <laughs> Tapas, okay, that, come on and you know like the energy of the crowd and you say yeah, 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 do, do some more. Stretch, 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 more, 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 more. You know that more orientation will come into yoga also. Where else will it go? It will come into all areas of my life. And then that also has to be balanced with santoshaha, contentment. Contentment with all areas of life. But, but let's start with the asana. Okay, let's, uh, life like seems too big. So while I am trying to do any asana, I stretch myself. Stretch myself meaning push myself, you know, whether it is in the context of alignment or flexibility, whatever it is, okay, that we are aiming for. And I also have santosha. It's difficult. If, if we aim only for santosha, then I lifted my hand, oh, I am so content. <laughs> you know, that also, wow, what great coordination. No, but both have to be there. That's not easy. So this Abhyasa is again and again I bring these values, Dharma to my practice and all the other Rangas also. But what I'm highlighting for you in, in the context of the practice of Dharma being simultaneous is that when I am practicing the Asana, I have not forgotten about Dharma. It comes into my practice. And likewise, in the asana, my mind is going, going all over. I bring my mind back. Oh, but what to do? I am complaining. No, 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 stop complaining. The job of the mind is to go all over and you thank the mind. Thank you very much that you go all over. That's really how we are able to learn anything. Suppose if you know like how we say in childhood, statue, and then you freeze. So what we are aiming for the mind is like you want the mind to freeze. No, 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 we don't want that. We want the mind to move, but the movement has to be exactly like how I want it. Because I am the master of the mind. It's my mind. Uh, hopefully, I'm not trying to control someone else. Okay? Manipulatively, surreptitiously or however. So now, any questions uh, about what I have said so far? Yes. come fresh into any practice, we always have a lot of excitement, but then as you said, it becomes monotonous. But how would you, how would you recommend we keep the practice fresh so that when we do come to the mat to meditate or uh, to asana, we are still motivated and it doesn't feel like a chore? Yes. If that makes sense. 
Fantastic. I'm so happy with the question. How do we avoid monotony? Is the question, do we really need to avoid monotony? Somehow I have uh, concluded that monotony is not so exciting. Hmm? And the nirodaha is possible because of vairagya also. Abhyasa vairagya bhyam. And, and let me respond to your question by talking about vairagya. Okay? Vairagya is being free from raga. What is Raga? Raga is a craving for something, an object, a person, or a situation, a condition. And the reason I use the word craving is because without it, that moment is incomplete for me. I must have my coffee exactly the way I want it. Otherwise, my whole day goes for a toss. Or I can only have almond milk. I cannot have any other milk. Okay? So our preferences start off very nicely. But then they become conditions that we place on ourselves. So vairagya, being free from the craving for an object or a situation or even freedom from the longing for excitement, freedom from the longing for freshness. Because now I have placed a condition on my practice. Whenever I do asana pranayama, I must feel fresh and energized and peaceful. And that's why a lot of us say, oh, my meditation wasn't good today. My meditation was superb today or we had a fantastic practice, right? Now this, whatever this is this fantastic practice for you has now become a condition, an aspiration. Yoga has been kept by the side. The purpose of yoga has been kept by the side. I am striving for this feeling. Yes? And I am striving for a particular feeling, whatever that feeling is. Because I am identified with it. And the more I identify with it, and when there are practices that I don't get that feeling, then I judge myself. What's wrong with me? You know, earlier when I used to practice, it was great. Now, either there is a problem with the teacher, they don't introduce, you know, new variations, useless teacher, <laughs> or there is a problem with the room, or there is a problem with uh, something else. I never pause to think that actually the reason I signed up for yoga, okay, from a traditional standpoint, is mastery of the mind. And so, Staying comfortable with discomfort is tapas. You stay with the discomfort such that the discomfort is no longer a problem. You know, that's what we say, right? How do you step outside your comfort zone if indeed that is an aspiration? It is an aspiration for most of us. Why? Because we don't want the situation to overwhelm us. All of us struggle with overwhelm all the time. So either we are being overwhelmed by the news that's constantly streaming or the notifications on the phone. Oh, you have to do this, you have to do this or some recommendations that you had to go to the yoga festival <laughs> or whatever. Okay. So, so many recommendations and then competing responsibilities roles, etc., etc. I have to do this, I have to do that. And of course, our long to-do list. Yeah. Managing overwhelm is not managing your to-do list. It's a part of it. What am I committed to? Why am I doing this asana? Overall clarity. If my commitment is 
to mastery of the mind that means i stay with discomfort and such that i have vairagya vairagya means i am free from the condition of monotony that i place on my mind i mean in this particular example so even when we talk about vairagya we talk about uh four aspects so four aspects meaning is almost like four stages one is i use my will and effort uh to reduce distraction uh, can you all give me some examples of cravings any craving that one has yes chocolate yes i think that's common for most of us <laughs> okay what else a person craving to meet your partner craving to meet your partner yes what else sleep yes especially if one is sleep deprived yes games new experiences yeah latest iphone okay so craving for all of these and the mastery of the mind is referring to being free from craving now yeah i can't hear you sorry spiritual fulfillment yeah we have to spell that out we have to flesh it out what is, what does that spiritual fulfillment look like yeah yeah ashram hopping guru hopping kind of yeah that's right okay <laughs> the next guru on the block so now um do we want to be free from craving is the question why would you want to be free from any kind of craving anyone peace okay what else distraction the craving is a distraction okay say again it's te- is temporary yes Thing, you don't have any choice yeah that's right yeah so any craving okay whether it's an object a person or a situation we want to be able to be free to love accept be there for that if indeed it's a person but we don't want to be so dependent on that person or a feeling that if that person or feeling is not there then i feel terrible about myself are you getting what i'm saying so we're talking about freedom from dependence on something and in the mahamrityunjaya mantra which is a wonderful mantra for shiva there is a reference to a melon which is ripe and the beauty about any fruit that ripens is that the fruit drops or you harvest it okay how does a fruit ripen or rather how do we mature as people so we mature or at least in the vedic tradition the maturity we are referring to is i've been there i've done that i fulfilled most of my desires according to dharma and i feel complete in the various pursuits of wealth and pleasure and helping doing good and so on and that relative sense of freedom and completeness allows us to mature so the toys that you played with in childhood do you have any idea where they are which landfill they are in 
<laughs> or they may have been gifted you know to the grandchildren and so on or the friend that you could not do without in in teenage years maybe you've grown out of that friendship or you are no longer as dependent on that person right so the the trajectory of the fulfillment of any desire is first we align it with dharma so you don't cause any harm in the fulfillment of the desire you enjoy it and then you are free from the desire that is one strategy the other strategy is also seeing that by the fulfillment of this desire i am not going to be any better so there is an inquiry vichara that is involved the person at, at my work uh, is very attractive we get along really well um they talk about like an office spouse you know so it's all innocent it's all good you know we are good for each other i could have an affair correct and then i will uh, spout wisdom who said monogamy is the way <laughs> i will question the norms of society i don't believe in that i think it is possible to love two people and maybe more at the same time then i will look for evidence to support my view and of course all along partner has no idea what's happening right and it's a different matter because of course these things are all based on mutual consent if i am okay with the partner also having the same view fine but i am not okay with that so i i have double standards but i don't call it out and so there is a discrepancy now <clears throat> with this discrepancy and i am justifying my craving my desire the fulfillment of my desire in fact i'm getting so entrenched in it that now i have to look for ways to manage the affair such that nobody finds out and etc etc okay so vairagya objectivity or freedom from desire can come from vichara inquiry that yes this person is attractive yes i get along very well with the person but i abide in the value of ahimsa i will not hurt my partner and i know that if i get too involved in this then the person will feel betrayed and so i better restrain myself abhyasa again and again <laughs> repeated practice don't think abhyasa is only asana abhyasa is in all areas of life okay repeated practice and vairagya again and again this is not going to be helpful for me or the other yes instant gratification for sure but i will hurt myself because i feel so guilty and then of course my partner whom i care for very deeply is also going to be hurt mastery of the mind is achieved by abhyasa and vairagya repeated practice and growing out of some desires by fulfillment growing out of other desires by inquiry okay so even the feel that i my i should feel energized and fresh and uh, excited after every yoga practice is a raga and so if i am committed that i will be feeling monotonous and then bored and like i definitely want to do zumba oh, you please do zumba also <laughs> okay zumba is not opposed to yoga you can do zumba crossfit whatever you want to do but i stay with my yoga practice because understand this i am transforming the relationship to my mind so you know the mind says no you shouldn't feel like this ah, no, no, that's okay <laughs> let the mind feel whatever it has to feel that my mind is not in opposition to me 
I have to see this again and again. Okay, any questions? Yes. Yeah, I think it's a specific example, so maybe you talk to me after the session. The principle is that of least injury, right? Least harm. And, you know, what is interesting about Yama, you know, the, the five um, avoidances. Do, are you, do you all know what they are, Yamas? What, what are they? Ahimsa. Yeah, Satyam. Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigraha. Yeah, okay. So we, we will, I was intending to talk about it uh, in the next session. But if we, I'm just talking about Ahimsa, understand that the value, value or what we refer to as the, as Dharma, is not absolute. You are not expected to practice ahimsa at all times, in all places, in all situations. It's not possible. In fact, you will have to kill yourself. <laughs> if you had to practice ahimsa, and of course that would be the greatest act of ahimsa, violence. Okay? See, life involves feeding on life. We are, you know, we use detergents and cleaning agents for the floor. We vacuum. So bacteria germs we're killing all the time and uh, even for food with even if you're eating vegetarian and we are harvesting uh, or you're eating non-vegetarian food life does feed on life so to think that you will reach a state where there will be absolute ahimsa is not possible but that doesn't mean that i justify the violence i cause so the the practice again and again is to be least hurting. In other words, to have the practice of loving kindness. Now this loving kindness, the way it manifests with a child, with your partner, with your colleague, with your aging parent will be different. And so it has to also be backed by Satyam speaking the truth. But again, speaking the truth is not at all times, in all places, in all situations. So if there is someone who comes to the hospital, has a tumor, and uh, actually came in for a suspected heart attack, so now after ER and then the person is in the ward, the family is called, and the person you know has been given whatever medication is lying lying down so the children you know in great anxiety they obviously ask the doctor so what's going to happen like what does the prognosis look like doctor says that uh, actually i have even worse news a heart attack he will recover from which we have managed to give him some medication but uh, we we suspect cancer Okay, so now here is this uh, person who has come in for a uh, with, with uh, you know for due to the heart attack, and uh, if the doctor at that point in time says satyam, I practice satyam, yoga, dharma, then and and breaks the news to the person, can the person handle it? May not be able to handle it. So you say, oh, you'll be fine, just few days, and you'll be out of the hospital. So we'll work to work to ensure that. Of course, we'll speak to the family and say that when the time is right, we will tell the person that the person has cancer and then whatever is going to be the treatment. So what I'm saying is that Satyam, Ahimsa and the other values, which I will talk about in more detail later, the way in which we apply it is contextual. 
and it depends on the dharma of the situation so my general principle would be that what is the dharma of the situation how do you understand what is a dharma oh what is good for the well being of everyone involved including you so sometimes we are confronted with uh, not acceptable behavior then what shall we do oh i will not hurt the other person he but that other person is going to trample on your feet and other people's feet also ah then you better speak the truth but do it in a way that is pleasant even if it is unpleasant the truth may that be told and let the person handle it oh the person will stop talking to me so be it if that if that is the quality of friendship or relationship so be it you know um so it it will depend okay on the specific instance what is suitable and what is appropriate for all concerned needs to be our guiding thought so the pastry is calling out to me from the refrigerator <laughs> it calls out to me all the time everything sweet it keeps so what is appropriate for me now sometimes is very very appropriate to celebrating somebody's birthday or or is just dessert or something and sometimes not right so you decide what what it is but always the guidance is dharma so here we want to also be able to pronounce it properly it's not dharma okay so when you say uh, let me dh dh so take yeah, the upper part of your tongue i mean the tip of your tongue and take it to the uh, what, what do you call that upper teeth the hmm? the roof sorry yeah the back of your teeth and then exhale okay so let's try it dh dh again dharma wow beautiful you all are naturals so there is no dharma okay is dharma okay um so little more about vairagya uh, but, but before that any any other questions uh, just one question how do you actually take care of this whole wild horse in the yeah Yeah, how does one take care of mana chitta vritti, मतलब अहंकार और बुद्धि? Yeah, so that's what all the Patanjali Yoga Sutras are about, right? And here we also want to um, talk about some kleshas. Okay, I think maybe there's time for that. See the. first we have to ident first we understand and commit to something which is this mastery of the mind what for i want to abide in my nature why because uh, why why should i abide in my nature by the way anyone that's why we are here that's why we are here no but why it's our natural state why should i abide in nature why oneness what for is a new thing on the block that's why no huh passion compassion, compassion? okay what else we are we are nature we come from the earth we go back here oh we're talking about death now okay <laughs> abhinivesha <laughs> anyway <laughs> okay so you know when we have a moment of happiness we don't want anything to be different right so let's say i want to meet the one i deeply love i haven't met for a long time let's say we were separated because of the pandemic or i eat that ice cream that's calling out to me from the refrigerator or i just walk out and there's this lovely breeze that's blowing and beautiful uh colors in the sky so what's happening is i the subject is the one who is the wanting person right i want things to be different i want myself to be different i want everyone to be different 
<laughs> okay, and when they are different, that's not enough for me because I say, oh, but you're so different from me. I don't think we can get along. We are, we are two peas in one pot or whatever it is. So now this wanting person who is resisting life, resisting oneself, different, different, I want different, different. But then when I meet the person I love or when I meet, um, or when I meet the ice cream or uh, I see something very beautiful, then what happens? That thing that was separate from me and me, we are now one, experientially, correct? We are one. And that's what I aspire for because I struggle with separation. This is universal. I struggle with separation. That's why all mobile networks promise great connectivity. You are always connected. Maybe not on these grounds as much, you know, but you are always connected. We want to always be connected because connection also presupposes separation. But what if you were not separate from anyone? Possibility, right? So just like the waves of the ocean, you know, this uh, Indian wave comes, uh, you know, is, is, uh, has traveled very far and is now hobnobbing uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. And then uh, the other waves are saying, hey, what are you doing here? You look really happy, but you're so small. So do you not have a complex? No, no, no complex. Uh, this is just a form. What do you mean? You know, life is such a struggle. I'm struggling to master my mind. I don't know what to do, etc., etc." And the Guru says, hey, with your form, as much as you struggle, you will never be able to overcome limitation. Because it'll be one after the other after the other. But how about considering the possibility that you are not just the form, but you are water. You are always here. The form is just an event that happens in what you really are. What defines you is something that can never be away from you. Right? So you are wearing a green t-shirt now, you can change. The green t-shirt doesn't define you. The body which is here for this lifetime actually doesn't define you. It'll come, it'll go. Mind too, the same thing. But what is the reality of that wave is just water. And so that tada drashtuhu swarupe avasthanam that I get a glimpse of who I really am which is not the result of an experience. It's not the subject-object experiential oneness. That through all the experiences that I have, who is the one that observes it all? Who is the one that is present in each and every experience? Monotonous, new, exciting, sad, disgusting, any experience. Who is there? So, it's me. Now, who is that me? Is it my eyes? But then, you know, when I go to the ophthalmologist, then they put lenses, right? They put, can you see? Ah, I struggle. A, A, B, C, K, J, again, try again. So, until I'm able to read smoothly, they keep putting some lenses and then I am able to say something. So what has actually happened is the eyes are a part of me but I am able to see the clarity that is there in the eyes. So in the sense I'll say no, no, I cannot see clearly. So the eyes have become an object of my awareness. How, how do I say that? Oh, because the mind tells me that I can't see clearly, please give me some other lenses. Yes? Then, when it comes to the mind, suppose I ask any of you, how are you feeling right now? And it could be feeling anything besides hungry. <laughs> 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 
Anyone? What? Anyone? Anyone can say what you're feeling? Hot. Tired. Yes, tired, hot. How do you know? Suppose I say, no, I don't think you're tired. What? What's wrong with you? You know what you are feeling or what you are thinking, right? So the, the feeling or the thought of being tired is an object of your awareness. It's external to you. It is drishyam. It is seen. Then who is seeing that? But hey, hello, that was a thought in the mind, right? You said? Oh, no, no, I'm feeling tired in the body. Ah, but you know, you're articulating it through the help of your mind. Who is the one that sees that? Can you say it's the, it's the mind? You can't say that. Oh, no, 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 it's one thought of the mind that is seeing the other thought of the mind. But remember, it is vritti pravaha. It is mind means flow of thoughts, different kinds of thoughts. So it's not like one thought goes and then sticks on and then says, Hello, I'm not going anywhere. But the thought goes and then some other thoughts come. But there is, there is you that is unchanging. That is the drashta, that is the seer. So the mind is an object of my awareness, whatever be the thoughts. Am I able to see this? Yes? Can I see that the mind, whatever happens in the mind, is an object or that I am the subject who sees all this? Yes? No? No? What's happening? Tell me, anyone. Am I able to appreciate this? Because we are talking about the drashta, the seer. The seer who is not affected or not touched, actually speaking, by any of the thoughts. The one who is always there. The one who is ever present in all periods of time. The one that is consciousness. Who is aware of the body? Who is aware of the mind? And therefore can make changes in the body and the mind. But the one who happens to have a human body and a human experience. Okay? But actually being consciousness. Okay. I think I will take a question now. And, and I also I have to mention, you know, I wrote a book. It's called You Matter. Uh, insights from Vedanta. Some of y'all listen to my podcast, Vedanta, the River of Wisdom. It has some episodes uh, that are transcripts or rather essays on different topics related to Vedanta. Kerry, who is sitting there, uh, is handling the books. So you're welcome to have a copy as well. Yeah. Okay, questions or clarifications. That Abhyasa and Vairagya is what helps. Yeah. See, you are always there. You are always there, right? Uh, in each and every experience. And therefore, that getting absorbed and consumed by an experience, it's as though it takes away from my nature. See, it's like this. The wave right now may be roaring. And maybe the situation is like that. You know, like let's say what happened during the pandemic. A lot of us had losses. And we experienced uh, like a lot of, uh, a lot of um, what shall we say, you know, tumultuous times. But through all of that, I am water. I am not touched. I am touched. The body-mind is touched. But actually, I am not touched. 
it's not either or so body and mind is touch goes through losses and therefore we need to have the framework of dharma to manage it along with that i also again and again i bring my mind back to seeing the truth of who i really am which is i am water untouched i will always be water water as in i will always be consciousness always free from the form the water continues to be what it is right it could be a wave it could be a tsunami it could be a surf it could be a wavelet it doesn't matter and so there is no condition that stands opposed to me i have to grow into that mastery that i have to play this role whatever be the role that's fine so i'm effortlessly gliding in and through different situations a lot of the time we are not able to do that because remember raga <laughs> raga and then of course is corollary dvesha strikes so i cannot stand certain people i cannot handle these situations i want to run away from them i I'd rather avoid them i rather withdraw because i'm so scared of being hurt or abandoned etc etc yeah so the practice is again and again there's a lot more to be said uh because of course P- patanjali yoga sutra is so huge so some of it we will continue to today um in terms of you know i want to focus on like practical takeaways i will talk a little bit more about the dharma framework and also the afflictions you know the things that affect us and how we want to be able to have both sakshi bhava so you know being able to witness what's happening at the same time have sakhi bhava sakhi bhava means being a friend a lot of us are very harsh on ourselves very critical and we want to be we want to learn to be compassionate to oneself and we hold both we hold both that i am able to witness because that's honestly the truth and in the way in which i interact with myself and others there is care there is compassion and sometimes it can be tough but those are the variations and shades of compassion okay om tat sat so i think the next session is at 3:30 and then i believe 1:30 um swami brahma vedanand ji is going to be here he's going to be talking about yoga and vedanta the connections so have a wonderful lunch